All right. So it is January 18th, 2023. We have begun another guardian training episode. This one is going to be titled Sexual Energies. I'm going to be going over a lecture quickly of some of the topics and thought forms I want to invoke in you first about sexual energies that maybe things you don't think about always when you think about that topic, but all of this whole container and this healing workshop is meant to, I would say, elevate your frequency, clear your frequency and focus your frequency. And that's sort of what I like to do in these videos. We meet every 18th. Thank you for those of you who've joined on my patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries, the guardian training tier. It's a $40 monthly commitment. And we, we meet every 18th to do a themed clearing and healing container like this. So we're going to do a short lecture quickly, and then I'm going to do energy work. So I'm going to have you stand up, move your energy around and do some clearing, opening, thinking about particularly your body when it comes to these energies. And finally, we're going to do uh, a little bit of written work at the end. So if you're watching this, please feel free to get out a pen and paper, begin writing some notes also, and feel free to mention in the comments and the chat rooms and stuff, what it is that maybe you want me to expand more on or work more on for the later dates and let's begin with today's lecture. So the topic today is again, sexual energies and the energy that wants to be the dominant here is more of the, I want to say energy manipulation education is more so what's coming through. And a lot of people now say that the reason why we're here is to learn how to manipulate energy and the rawest form of energy that a lot of us have contact with is our sexual energy because our bodies sexually reproduce in order to basically experience creation throughout uh, and mutate and so on and change according to this the environment that we're in which is constantly changing and mutating itself so through sexual reproduction we mutate and we create beings that are more accustomed to the current environment and then they continue to create mutated versions of themselves and bodies and so on. But for those of you who are parents and so on, this is something I mentioned in the preamble that I did on an Instagram live a couple of days ago on Monday was that speaking to your children about sexual energy and how sexual reproduction works is a bit tricky if you weren't given that sort of structure at, when you were a child. But specifically, one thing that came through really strongly was to use the terminology that of flowers and how flowering trees and flowers themselves create sex, uh, sex cells, which is basically a cell with half, in a way, of the genetics that a, a whole being needs. And it takes another entity and their sex cell to mix in order to get enough genetic information to build a whole being. There are entities in our environment that will reproduce without these specific cells, and they are asexually reproducing beings. They're a different class of beings. They have a different way of manipulating energy. There is reptilian and like, uh, I want to say more lizard species on earth that can like something that complex in our whole ecosystem there is species that can asexually reproduce that are that complex. I've been reading about it. It is a something to note. And although most of this video is going to be talking to sexually reproducing beings, or at least uh, the offspring of sexually reproducing beings, I should say, this particular video isn't going to be focusing as much on asexual reproduction, but it's also something I think you should teach your children as it is how most of our cells in our body divide and replenish themselves, every cell except for our sex cells, which are created in our sex organs or our basically, it's just one organ out of all of the organs in our body that are creating specific ingredients for life. So breaking that down, kind of generalizing that and just knowing organs, knowing what they make and knowing what cells need, what is an excellent way to start if you want to just a broader look. But when it comes to human sexuality, there is a lot of complication, obviously, that we have, I have witnessed growing up in our current culture about how there's been extremes with 
the actual act or the pursuit of sexual relationships? This is maybe what some of you were wanting me to talk about in this particular workshop. And in more, I'm going to create the medicine for you to have your own individual energy, your sexual raw power, clean, clear, activated, and in no concern to anyone else, any other partner, any other goals. This is all about this, the yourself currently. If you're watching this with your partner, just do the exercises individually next to each other that I'm going to be doing later in this video for charging up your body and clearing out lower vibrational, old memory, all stagnant stuff that maybe you just haven't been able to do or been led through with such determination like I feel like I must do for all of us today in this video. So this engagement between beings has been a major issue, obviously, that we have to clear. And there's a major sickness on the earth when it comes to how sexual energy is being used, engaged, groomed, and so on. So we have quite a few stages of issues that we need to cover. The first one is people who are sexually traumatized or have had their sexually sexual energy or their raw true force or their jing, which they call it in, in Taoist practice, which is the three energy systems, qi shen and jing. So jing is your ancestral energy levels. So this is your sexual energy or your sexual capacity to pass on the seed of your whole ancestral line. So you need that energy. So they're all their hard work. Also, it's the boost that they give you in a way in this lifetime. So children have an abundance of this jing of this raw energy and it gets funneled into into competitive sports it gets funneled into school and a lot of the time it's being purposefully burnt off in these in these engagements with other beings in competition and through uh exhausting the child from their regular sleep schedules from feeding properly and so on the way that we replenish our jing is by meditating and also by withholding and kind of clearing off energetic ties that are draining our sexual energy. As we age, we obviously engage more in interactions with other beings and cords and uh, oddities and interactions between them form based on the level of how that interaction went. People who have had their sexual energy uh, taken from them or had an exchange with their sexual energy or manipulated, even when they are children, there's a piece of them that is trying to replenish itself. And that piece can be distorted quite intensely into being manipulative behaviors. And so you're trying to take something from others to replenish this whole, but instead of engaging those behaviors in this workshop and with your awareness, I'm hoping that we can sort of see those who are sick in that way, who are constantly in a state of depletion, who are uh, potentially have been abused and hurt, and they're sick and they need help. And seeing those and knowing what to do with people like that is in a way, another way to show your own sexual sovereignty, your own raw energy sovereignty, in your life. So what you can do with beings like that, of course, I would say for sure, notice those who are trying to manipulate you. If you get any sort of instinctual signals off of another being that they're not safe, that they're more animalistic, that they seem scared or twitchy or nervous, it's a very good sign that their sexual energies and their raw source energy is distorted and having a problem. You will know someone who is healthy in their own raw energy and in their jing because when you go around them, you don't feel like you have to give them anything and it doesn't feel like they want anything from you. And they seem to be a self-nourished uh, being and their presence and their energy is just more of a glow and a light in your life whenever they come around. And that person who you may be thinking of it may be someone you don't see very often. It might be a person that doesn't go out very often, but when you do see them, you're like, wow, there's a reason for that. That person's been cultivating their energy. They've been protecting their aura. They haven't been allowing other people to feed off of their, their vitality just to get their attention. 
those people have safe boundaries. And that's also something that people in this sexual distortion who have been injured, they don't understand or want to replicate good boundaries. Some of them do. Some of them learn the lesson. They go, wow, something happened to me. It was terrible. I'd never want to do that. And I want to educate others not to do that. That shows that they weren't completely depleted from that engagement. But if you were further depleted, then you do become this hungry sort of infant child again, like there's this missing energy. So we got to look out for people like that. You got to train your children to look for people like that as well. People who are unhealthy, people who are asking them questions. No one should really be asking a child for anything, uh, really, uh, unless it's maybe their opinion about something, just, just to see if they're all right or whatever, if they need something. But otherwise, uh, children should just be kind of uh, supervised on their own devices and not, I would say, coerced into sort of any sort of actions. When you start coercing children's energy, especially we have systems like that, it's another sign of, I would say, harvesting sexual energy or this raw life force, this creative life force that's within us when we're born and then just matures into itself as we age. And this process of maturing has been harvested a lot. So we're kind of replenishing that. So I'm going to recall, let's just think about quickly your little version of you. Perhaps you were homeschooled, perhaps you were schooled, you know, amongst healthy people. That's wonderful. A lot of us were in public school systems. We were forced to obey. We were forced to use our creative energy in uniform and non-creative ways we were pinned against each other in competition. We were, our, our self image and our ability to perform was constantly evaluated and judged. And it was a very stressful situation. Our bodies were not being allowed to sleep even to the levels and needs that they needed as we were developing. So that was also burning out our system. So let's just think about that little version of us. Let's place a nice big, thick shell around her or him or they, and just a nice cocoon where that energy around you can actually, that you're emitting as a child can bounce back to you and replenish you instead of being siphoned off of your body and just re reclaiming your sovereignty, reclaiming your energy in that time and in that body and committing to yourself then and there that I will guard my jing, I will guard my raw energy. I will have boundaries. I will say no when I want to say no. And I will find and have my alliances, not only in the spirit world with my guides, my ancestors with God, but also in my family, within my friend groups. And I will have healthy relationships with people I can trust. And I will continue to be replenished by my creative desires and actions. Now, I think it's necessary that we go back in time and kind of make that capsule for our little self, because I think that's when a lot of that energy was being siphoned. So if you can go back and just deliberately reprogram that space, you may notice a difference in your vitality by tomorrow or over the next week. And you may be having some really uh, positive dream work when it comes to finding potentially subconscious areas where school or these areas in your childhood were draining your life force against your your will against what you truly desired there could be many reasons for that like i said sports family members it could be being around family members who were sexually abused and were trying to make amends or people who were sexually abused and then continue the cycle of abuse as well we have, the, like I said, it can go in both directions, but we're clearly wanting to stop the cycle of abuse by becoming healers and not only healing ourselves, making sure we're doing the monthly maintenance, at least like with this guardian training, with our aura, with our, with our energy levels, but then giving those codes and giving those healthy behaviors back out through infographics or paintings through song, through our own creative energy, by using our sexual energy in a positive, more globally conscious way and providing medicine that will be for the sick, for those who are still needing to find their way, needing to find their light again. There is instead of being ashamed for whatever it is that perhaps drained you in the past, because there's plenty of things that we got tricked into 
doing with our time and energy that, and our raw source energy that didn't feel as replenishing at the end. You maybe have some regrets about participating in A, B, or C in your life. That's totally fine. But sometimes the shame, the sometimes we build shame and that is stagnant energy in the body. That is, that is something we're going to have to call upon now. So we're going to call upon your shame. If there's any about something that you feel like you shouldn't have done, or you feel like someone did to you that you wish didn't happen. You know, you, if you could have changed it, you would have ripped their, you know, their eyes out or something, or like, you know, gotten the help you needed earlier when you saw the signs or the red flags earlier and so on, whatever it is that you feel instead of being ashamed of what you've experienced in this life and potentially past lives, if you are getting those memories, because those are all stored in our womb as well and in our bodies. But instead of being ashamed of what we've engaged with, we have to now wear it as our pride. We have to wear it as our self. I want to say it's a badge of honor for our soul, a lesson learned, a badge of honor, a diploma, a a graduation, being proud of what you survived, being proud of what you endured, being proud that you still have been able to turn that energy around, being proud that you didn't act negatively upon someone else you chose different you alchemized from that situation i would encourage that if and i know that this topic can be heavy but again we just have to be proud that we survived we learned and that we are here together in order to upgrade and burn off that intensity that we're going to do in the exercises here as i get through these notes So the sexual energy that we're referring to, like I said, is the raw source energy of our life, of our cells, of the fact that our cells can, they can multiply themselves. The fact that we have cells in our bodies as we age that can create new people. This is that raw energy potential that we have in our bodies. We've chosen to be in these bodies. We've chosen to have this experience this way. We are the only beings like this. You can see there's plenty of other beings out there that sexually reproduce. Some of them lay eggs. Some of them lay live young. There's much more variety even in the animal kingdom about sexual reproduction. But again, (laughs) the animal kingdom and so on is more of an innocent reflection about what, what it is to create more life when it comes to sexual reproductive uh, cells and organs But when it comes to the energy that it takes to build up to that one point where you can maybe have a mate or maybe create a life with a mate, there is so much more metabolic process that goes into it. And a lot of it is also about your uh, strength and this energy shows up in our, in our bodies, in our, in the luster of our hair, in the in our skin, in our posture, in the strength of our voice, there is a a glow that comes out. And when we are fed with that glow during the peak portions of our development, uh, people have high levels of confidence. They have high levels of, I would say, sexual activity as well. They make a lot of engagements with other people. They tie a lot of cords around other people as well and they don't clean it off and then they begin to age and that sexual energy that raw reproductive energy that our biological suit is doing begins to slow down and transfer so it may also become then an elder in the group and a matriarch or patriarch in the group so those testosterone levels are going to drop when uh, men age, they tend to become more in, ta- in touch with their feminine side. They begin understanding the grandmothers and they begin becoming elders and having wisdom and holding space and having emotions and doing ceremony and kind of more into the more, I would say, feminine and softer practices of life. And in a way, women begin to become more a, of a uh, I would say a less aggressive as well energy, a more subdued energy, but
But also it seems like when women get into that age, there is this other peak that happens, which is something I think society kind of like doesn't quite talk about. So we're just going to bring it up in this video for the sake of this. I don't even have a lot of downloads about this, I'll be honest, but it's coming in right now is that when women go through their menopause and their bodies change and they have that other peak, it is a different stage of a woman's life that's very important and has a lot of value to the tribe. And a lot of women, again, feel ashamed of this time because they think the virility is gone, that their bodies are dying and that, you know, then Jing and their storage levels and how they've been taking care of their vessel really becomes important because they don't have that constant re renewal and that flow of making sure that her body's ready to have a child every month. Instead, her body is beginning to just focus on itself and is beginning to solidify different ways and beginning to change and become, and not only that, but it changes women's spirit. It changes their soul. And the same thing happens to men. The biological process of what men even go through is even less, I would say, talked about during that time in their lives. But all those uh, motions and shifts in our biology have been reflected in culture with a sexual I would say with sexual energies, but the cultural way that they've exploited sexual energy is basically by making it the most obscene, grotesque, and non-relatable almost way of sexuality that any woman who's going through menopause or any young child who's trying to understand and develop and join the community, join adults and see what they're getting at and why they're laughing at these jokes and why you know there's affection over here and they you know every child if you're raised right will constantly crave affection so like constantly having engagements and attachments they're seeking so if we are constantly giving them no support on where to go and where to land that curiosity and land that energy they're going to rely on the culture they're going to rely on sources of information that haven't been checked by you or me or anyone probably very intelligent. And we're kind of in that bomb, that like bomb field right now. Like there's the landmine field is out there still, especially with the internet and all of the sexual distortions that we're dealing with, which is why I think we're doing these small groups and we're fortifying these energies slowly. And it's going to keep building interest with the, I guess, with those who are the forerunners, those who are committing to this, it's going to just resonate and cause those alchemical shifts to happen in other people. So this, this idea that there is times in our lives where our energy is received or not received, or there's failures or successes with our sexual energy, those are all interpersonal situations that drain our jing, drain our life force. And in a way, I'm going to be asking you to just release every single interpersonal relationship you've ever had right now. This is in order to as well open up your crown chakra so we can access the whole collective consciousness, which is a lot more, there's no interpersonal connections in a way directly. It's just an overall connection to all of it. And you don't have responsibility over any of it. You're just a piece of it. These interpersonal connections, in a way, in our culture, have also been designed with weird sexual uh, hierarchies, as from our families, from our friends as well. And these interpersonal relationships, some hierarchies and expectations that happen within the family, even trying to control the children's sexual energy, what they do with their marriages, for example, or how or when they date and who or when they, they spend their time with interpersonally, there's a lot of control and extreme there. And some people will then take that and run with it and go in really dangerous directions and continue interpersonal relationships with people to, and it'll just continually drag them until they end up with somebody just as depleted as they are, usually addicted to some kind of uh, neurochemical boosting substance because they've depleted themselves and they're just living off of this boost. And there's these two, you know, or more broken people that are drained and they don't know how to replenish. And so thankfully, hopefully that's like a rock bottom that happens a lot. And hopefully at that time, that's when the spirituality kind of pops back in. That's when hopefully the Akashic records like break open, if we're lucky, 
and the tantric art of how to move the energy within the own body and then share it and use it to heal and work with another person and then or make a child deliberately with that energy is more tuning into our collective consciousness how there isn't as much concern about success or failure as more as it is about personal amplitude your personal energy charge and how you know who you are with how their energy matched your energy was it a a cohesive match or was it clearly showing that there is right like jaggedy edges and issues that are not making you feel like you can trust this person or so on it's more about how we trust the self and learn to listen to our own cues and so on so we have our own internal sexual energies of masculinity and femininity our women's body makes testosterone progesterone and estrogen men's bodies also get pretty much all of the same kind of chemistry it's just we're bus they're just slightly different in chemistry and from from the womb which is why we develop slightly different but we're not too different in our the way we channel sexual energy or our own energy is workable in both genders or both sexes so what they say is that there's first there's the black energy which is kind of the abyss or the void of the femininity this is the energy that creation exists within and is created within it is the overall womb in a way and this mystery this mystery of anything could happen basically it is that abyss it is that pure chaos realm pre-creation and created or where creation can occur and then there is the golden energy is talked about which is the more masculine electric energy that is the the directed the purposeful the creation uh juice in a way the physical in a way versus the non-physical almost with the feminine energy and these two energies are supposed to basically just like snakes wriggle up your spine obviously and kind of pop out the top of your head and keep wriggling up and going up through your other chakra systems. Some won't show that. That's why pharaohs had like a snake coming out of the top of their head because it was like saying that their internal snake or their sexual energy, sometimes there's two snakes, were combined, were activated, and that he was he or she really were able to tap into higher vibrational energies that you were able to channel their sexual energy and their juices into the technology that was our pineal gland and our crown chakra and our upper chakras which is sort of the mystery school things and it used to be where they would privatize these other heightened experiences by encouraging these lower depraved sexual acts in the culture and that persisted that was a long persistent thing that happened and we're un undoing there's a lot of weird debates and battles in that area of depravity that try and make that area relevant and saying that they deserve to be there and they deserve to exist. But it's just evidence of the illness, that the fact that they exist at all is evidence of the illness in our tribe and in our planet that we are elevating out of. We're lifting our amplitude, we're lifting our frequency, we're clearing in a way the density and the blockages and the mind control programming that's keeping your lower chakras down, that's keeping them drained and keeping them not sovereign from what it is that you're truly here to do with your energy, what it is you're truly here to see and tap into, tune into, share with us, share with the collective consciousness, share with your heart, share with your arms wide open. That's what we're going to be more so working on in this one. So Let's see, just imagine again, like I said, those two snakes going up your from your seated position. So imagine if you can feel your tailbone, that's where you want to start and just go through basically the center column of your body with this imagination of these snakes or these two energies. It's just easy to picture it as snakes because you can picture their motion. But have them crawl up and wrap all the way around, 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 and coil up around every vertebrae. You have 33 of them. 
vertebra all the way up to the back of your neck. And then it just kind of comes out through the top of your head. You can even go unicorn mode and grow a horn out the top of your head, your energy. And not only that, but sometimes then, sure, you can work your energy up and out of your body and to charge your greater aura or your ka body, some say, with your energy. So if you ever get too much of a charge and you just want to meditate, just picture those snakes and that they're nourishing and charging and buzzing your larger aura or your ka or spirit body. And you want to charge this body because you, they say that it helps with astral projection, giving you that nice, solid, lucid spirit body. So when you're dreaming and astral projecting, you know, you can touch things, you can engage with things, you can be more solid. There's more charge to that version of you also. So that's another reason why cultivating this energy is helpful because it uh, allows you to just experience more of life, experience more of what's available to you in the realm and break free from your flesh suit and live bigger and bolder and prepare not only for this life, but prepare and put in work for your other lives and for your ancestry and charge yourself with your own raw force instead of depleting it and giving it away because you feel like you need to be busy. You feel like you need to be doing something. You have this extra energy. You got to give it away. You got to do something with it. Obviously, that's the, the energy harvesting situation that we've been dealing with. And some people are even getting harvested in dream time if there isn't enough of a, I would say, understanding of this the aura at all times because permeability and the aura changes all the time we're very we're fluctuating beings there's a lot of circumstances changing our opinion and shifting our ideas all the time but to fortify your aura as often as possible with uh basically baptizing yourself is a great way to do it in the bathtub, but doing with salt baths and so on and completely submerging yourself and baptizing your energy. It's a great way to slough off any sort of hooks or energy harvesting uh, incentives that maybe are attached to you. Because when you become a bright, luminous, joyful being, people who don't feel that way or people who want stuff they will hook you and try and figure out how to use your energy like a battery to achieve their goal. And so, like I said, we're going to pop all that off <laughs> in our workout. So we're, we're pretty much going through the workout now. But yeah, just because maybe you've been through worse as well in your life through your engagements or through with your own body, you've been through worse. So whatever you're going through now or this depletion you feel now is like, it's all right, or it's not so bad. I just want you to recognize that you're worth it. You're, you recognize your worth, recognize your weight in gold, recognize your spirit and that energy that lives within you that wants to be cultivated. The reason you're watching this probably raise your standards and you're going, you have my permission, but you're going to need to raise your standards. Even just starting now, after hearing that just slightly, and just keep doing it every day. Raise your standards of what you're engaging with energetically, and you're going to attract much more beneficial engagements with you, with other beings who have management over their sexual energy. It's not leaking. They're not seeking. They're not, uh, they're not even there. They aren't even operating in that level of existence or that plane of the game. They're operating from their heart. They're operating from their throat. They're speaking the things that they love and they're speaking the things that they've seen or that they perceive. They're operating in the upper chakra area more so and engaging with you in that area, relating to you as a brother or a sister instead of seeing you as either a mate or a, com a competitor in the mating pool. Like there is that plane of existence and that mentality. And we're obviously raising our standards to have a better engagement with our community as we go into this age of Aquarius. So let's stand up now and do the workout portion. Okay. Hopefully you can hear me. Good job on the lecture portion. So first of all, 
when it comes to your body and your chi, if you want it to be going up and down your spine the way that you do and we want, sometimes you need to clear the blockages out from your cerebral spinal fluid in itself. And there's some tools like that that I wanna show you that I use for that. This is one, it's kind of having a hard time. Oh, Z wants to come in. Having a hard time focusing, but this is particularly meant to basically just be something that hooks into your back and helps to relieve pressure that gets built up along your spine. I don't know if you heard that, but it helps relieve pressure built up on your spine. And I was shown that I needed to bring this particular item in today or anything like it. If you've never done a cranial sacral massage or therapy, and if you've never done myofascial release therapy, I would also recommend that you go do that if you're having some issues with your energy flow in general and with your self-love and your self-health. It's like being held and nurtured in a way that I've not experienced. It's a wonderful technique and it helps your cerebral spinal fluid and your lymphatic fluid all in your legs and all in the areas of your body that it gets built up. It helps release it in a gentle way through prolonged holds and slight movements and so on, but no adjustments, not like a chiropractor. So I just had to add that in. So what we're gonna do to kind of clear our energy from these attachments that we've gained through our life and clear our chi as well as our, and begin kind of, I want to say quantumly replenishing our jing as well. <laughs> Let's begin with a few just sweeping motions over. So I'm going to back up. Hopefully you can hear me. Okay, great. You can stand. What's that thing called? I don't actually know what they call the darn thing. I wish I did. Let's see if there's a words on here. It says, it says Liba, L-I-B-A, Liba on here, but it's basically just a hook. We got it in the mail. Works wonders to release. Some of the tension I've had in my back, I, nothing else has ever worked. So would recommend. And I also got one of those Thera guns that has the repetitive uh, massage. Also, there's the ones you can stand on that shake your lymphatic. Those are other recommendations. Also, if you need a little extra help to get your chi flowing, if you've aged, you're feeling a little crunchy, you know, we have to get your chi flowing everywhere for your sexual energy to be healthy. So let's first work on, like I said, clearing your whole aura and getting your quantum jing associated. So let's work on that first. So follow me if you can. Make sure that you can spread your arms out. 360, thank you. Okay, so rub your hands together, please. Until you feel the heat, obviously. When you feel the heat, I want you to stop rubbing your hands. Do the prayer motion against your heart and close your eyes and just absorb that heat as the preliminary sort of love energy that we're going to give our body right now as a little bit of a first warmth, okay? This is warmth. This is love. Okay, absorb that in. Breathe it in. All right, place your hands fully on your chest, right into your heart chakra and the upper part of your lungs here. Breathe that in again. Feel the warmth of your hands. Okay, now I want you to say out loud, I fully accept myself. One more time, breathe in. I fully accept myself. Excellent. So I want you to rub your hands together again. This time we're going to go and put our hands over our hip bones. 
when they're nice and warm, we're going to say the same thing. Nice and warm. So you can feel the heat. We want to feel the heat. So my hands are getting really hot now. Okay, I'm going to place my hands over my hip bones like so. I guess I'll put them right here. There's my pelvis. Feel the warmth. My, uh, that part of my body absorbed that energy a lot quicker than, than my chest did. I don't know if you noticed that shift, but that might be a good sign. So one more time, bring in that heat. And then we're going to say the, the line that we fully accept ourselves. So build up that heat again. Place it on your pelvis and we'll say, I fully accept myself. <laughs> Ah, okay. Release in your arms now. I want you to shake your arms till your shoulders start to like, you really feel it in, in your upper shoulders. Lift your arms up and really, ooh, we gotta shake it out in the upper back first. That's what I'm feeling, the tension first. So let's do the upper back. So some forward rotations with the shoulders <laughs> and you can go backwards. Okay. Now um, we're going to do the clearing now. So again, I'm going to have you have your hands kind of like little scoops in front of you like this. <laughs> and I want you to basically scoop the energy up and over your head and like toss it behind you. So behind you is in a way a portal of where your energy builds up also. And it also brings your energy to your into your toroid and into your heart as well. So you can you can um, push the energy from your back like this and build it up in your back and push it. And you can move objects like that. I've learned how to do it. It takes a little practice, but I've I've done it with light objects. But what we're going to do is I'm going to have you scoop the energy up and over your head, not to attach it to your body, but to basically like, whoop, like say goodbye. Like we're just going to move that energy back and give us a lot more leeway behind us. We're going to push the energy back as if there's like a jet stream of energy coming off our back. And this is going to make a sense in a second, but we are moving through time space very fast. <laughs> So we're going to grab all the energy that no longer serves us and we're going to ask for it to pool into our hands right now. It's going to come out through our wrists and pool into our hands. It's going to pull out of our bloodstream. It's going to pull out of our memory. It's going to pull out of our chi system. Our hands are our chi, <laughs> chi and basically our energy manipulation locations. So we're going to pull all that energy into our palms right now out of respect. We're truly grateful for all the lessons that we have learned. I ask to pull all the energy that no longer serves me into my hands. Okay, and now put your hands together like there's a bowl in front of you. It's really starting to pull up. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta add some people. Okay. Okay, now we're going to speak over this energy before we let it go. This is a private conversation that you're going to have. Obviously I can't hear you, but this is a private conversation you're going to have with this pool of energy that's in your hands. I want you to give it a, a blessing or a grace, give it a prayer basically to be safe and go on its way and thank it for teaching you in whatever way that feels appropriate. I want you to get intimate with this moment. This includes all the discordant and confusing energies that you've experienced. Everything that didn't make sense or you no longer want to align with. Thank you for teaching me. I wish you the best. 
May you be return to the greater system. All right, and now we're going to push the energy over our heads. Toss it back as a celebration. Woo. We did it. It's in our past. It's behind us. We did it. Now we're going to take our energy hands and basically go over our body and our aura like this all the way to the floor. It's like you're cut. It's like you're going to cut yourself a new shape right now. We're just going to cut all the energy cords, place them down into the earth. Everything that's attached to you that you no longer need, we're just going to wipe it off and place it into the earth. Okay. Now, there is a lot of opportunity for cords and so on and attachments to happen in our bodies when we engage, like I said, with people and our sexual energy can get blocked and it can be, I want to say, maliciously programmed potentially as well. So we want to get rid of that. That's what this process has been. Just keep pushing that energy down. What's, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to place one hand on our heart and one hand on our lower dantian, but this is the area in our gut underneath the belly button. This is where a lot of that energy in our jing is stored also in this part of our body, basically. And they call this a lower dantian area to a degree. And uh, this area is very important for how we're doing these memories. So we're going to Mutually now, we're going to lean on the energy of the group in this quantum container here. So I have my left hand on my heart. I have my right hand on my lower belly. You can do whichever one feels right for you. This is what feels good for me. But with this container and with this group of people and this intention, my lights flicker, flickering because they know what I'm going to ask, but we're going to now intentionally mute and mutually charge each other's bodies to the point where we are so charged that all the other lower vibrational things of our past, things that no longer match our frequency, we are not going to be in resonance with them anymore for good. Unless, you know, there is some sort of divine reason that you need to review that lesson again. I can't stand in the way of that in your soul. But if you need this extra boost to just lift your vibration and release, and have permission to let go, let's do this together. So let's just picture everyone in this container, everyone watching this video in the future. Picture them also touching their chest over their heart and their lower belly with their other hand. And just feel what this feels like with your hands. Feel what it feels like to be in a million billion other bodies with two arms, hands, and who can do the exact same thing that we're doing how we are all one and this body is an instrument for our energy to exchange with ourselves and with others and all the multi-dimensions that we have access to. I want you to feel the heat in your chest begin to build and push it through your arms, back into your chest, back into your, your belly. We ask that the energy of this group and of this healing container charge all of us involved to a new frequency out of reach of our old ways of our old patterns. So we may be born anew and refreshed with our sexual energies, with our chi, with our intentions. We return to sender gently and without any notice all that no longer serves us. We don't need to alert anybody. We don't need to concern anybody with this. This is all about the individual vessel being clean, clear, and sovereign. Clean, clear, and sovereign. Clean, clear, and sovereign. We have the capacity to be healers, to hold space and forgive.
We have the capacity to teach this knowledge and raise the vibrations of others as we continue to walk after this workshop together. I don't know about you, but I can feel an incredible charge building in my body. I think we're doing an excellent job, truly with compassion and with the love of all of us wanting a better life, a better energy experience. May it be achieved now. Now, when it comes to the written work, that's what we're gonna dive into next. So before we get into the written work, I'm just gonna have you move your hands over your body and add that extra energy into areas that need love. So if anyone's ever laid hands on you or if there's any areas that are sore right now, add that love into that area and replenish it for good. like a nice warm hug massage it into the muscles if you need to we're just going to do a little bit more energy work over the body just to show it that we care that we're glad that it is clear and the best part about releasing cords is being extremely gentle so we don't actually cause any sort of uh, repercussions a lot of those cords were hooked because someone was desperately needing some energy or at least they thought they did or desperately needing something of you so they might try and contact you back or something to try and re-establish that cord with you re-establish because they haven't done the work to heal or replenish that part of their of their past of their of their patterning of their subconscious We send love and healing and respect to all the other beings in our collective. And may what we've done today be mutually healing, mutually warming, and uplift the vibration of all the sexual energy in our collective, the consciousness of it. So finally, in this last little bit for the written portion, I'm just going to ask you now to write down, please, any sort of area in your body or in your consciousness, I would say, that came up the most during that. There's a lot and a lot of experiences that we've all had, and it's very hard for me to cover and work with each individual when it comes to this energy. This is a mutual healing experience that we're having, but you have your personal background and I wanna respect that. And we're gonna respect that process now. So please, if you wouldn't mind writing down whatever it is that came up to wanna be healed more or discussed more from your past, from your experiences. And if there was absolutely nothing, then wonderful job. This has been a, a video of maintenance for your body. I know it was very simple in a lot of ways, the techniques that I share tonight, but really sometimes simplicity is best. And when it comes to, again, with the energy of a group channeling through your body, you don't want to be contorted in too many different directions because we really are just a column of a bone stacked up on each other, these 33 bones and the way the energy goes up the spine and the way that it comes down the spine is, uh, it can be potent. And we, we do just mostly want to stand straight up, maybe one foot slightly in front of the other arms down, like in those Egyptian power poses and allow that energy just to charge your body. I accidentally did forget one of the exercises I was going to show you. So just for fun, if you're standing or sitting, this will still work. But as a final thing to charge yourself that martial artists actually do and people who have to do this type of more uh, charged up stuff like security guards and people in that level, there is a technique that is literally at the bottom of your body. Uh, everyone has that ability to clench 
clench the bottom of their bodies, you know, clench your, the bottom of your digestive tract and clench that energy. But that's actually a source of power. And when you clench that, you may notice that you actually get a jolt a lot of the time up your body. And I can't even sit still the first time, you know, that your body does it. Cause it's like, whoa, cause you just and we do it naturally in a way also when we're in an emergency, that part of your body clenches and you get this slight boost, this slight alertness. And that area is designed for that. And you can work with that muscle and you can work with that to charge and replenish your energy as well. So even if someone's getting weird with you and you can tell that they're trying to suck your energy from you here, like I was saying in the past videos, doing Qigong and swaying in a, in a um, figure eight motion with your legs and switching the energy between your body, creating a really strong auric field. That's another thing you can add to that technique is that clenching and releasing as a way to like build up the charge in your body really quickly. Cause like I said, people genuinely use it for that purpose. It is really used that way. Uh, not a lot of people talk about it maybe in the West, but again, they're all about depleting and drug use out here not as much about natural remedies to charge and prolong life. Uh, the lower chakras and, and the colon and areas as well hold a lot of this trauma. If you haven't been doing that sort of maintenance, I was just on a show with a woman who got the advice of a lifetime while she was uh, the flight attendant on a flight. And she was working with a woman who was a hundred years old, did not look a hundred at all. And this woman told her that she had to get uh she got um what's what do they call it uh oh no I'm forgetting the name right now but basically she got her she they would do every three months they would do an enema or they would do a colon cleansing technique of some kind to basically pull the toxins and the matter out of their lower, lower digestive tract and keep them vital and healthy in that whole area. It really needs that. They need, it needs to breathe. There's a lot of dark and intense mucus that can form. And we've been eating foods that form these things on purpose as well, because it, it causes this decay early in our lives instead of when you may eventually decay from just <laughs> getting too much sunshine and you're 150 and you just turn into a raisin. Like those sort of differences in decay, there, there's a lot more happening within that's unnecessary. So a colonic, thanks guys. The colonic is a specific technique that you can look into yourself to clear again, that energy, that density, that regret, that pain, that shame that you may be feeling, that, that literal sourness, that literal toxicity that you're like, that's not me. Like I wasn't like that as a kid. Where is this toxic person? Who is she? Who is they? Who are they? Why am I so toxic? It literally could just be the toxins in your body needing to be released. So fasting and colonics is another thing that I would recommend for that to clear that area out. Obviously then Kegels is on the list as well for another way to help replenish and strengthen that lower area and get your Jing sort of replenished also is meditating. Jing, Jing replenishes when we rest and when we meditate and have sort of good wins for not only us, but for our seven generations, whatever it is that we do that replenishes that part of our body. And So if you are feeling low and you feel like you're totally drained from energy, then I would recommend that you do more meditating with Kegel work in order to really charge the lower area and then breathe it in and replenish it and fill it like you have a cauldron in your belly or like the entrance is in the center of your chest and you're just like filling your cauldron again and you begin to build this glow, this and this energy will begin to come back to you. If you need extra help with that, obviously I'd be happy to help you on ascensiondiaries.com. I have a five week coaching option. So we can meet once a week for five weeks and we can go through building your vitality where I'm actually holding you ac accountable and I can channel messages 
uh, throughout the five weeks, which is a lot easier to do research and keep up with a patient for five weeks in, in that context versus just one session when I'm getting an avalanche of information. And I do my best for that also, which it really does. I do get a lot done, but then to be able to apply it over the five weeks, instead of just doing the initial session where we get all the data, then to then apply it is also a way to build and fortify our own sexual energies and our source raw energy is to build on your progress and invest in building on your progress as an individual and a lifting and charging your amplitude as a person. So you may access these higher vibrational planes on a more regular basis and engage higher vibrational people who have constructive and really beautiful creative ideas. They are truly creating from a realm of beauty through a realm of mutual respect and love. And, and you will attract those people more when you raise the amplitude of your body. So... <laughs> We are, let's see if there's anything else I need to add that came through today. That's good. And finally, the last thing I just want to touch on again is the power of the abyss as well. We did touch about that, about the feminine energy, but again, a lot of, in a way, sexual energy exists in the mystery of creation. And the mystery of what could be created, especially for sexually reproducing organisms, when two other, when two beings can create a third, all that genetic information in that third thing is different than the first two things from the, from the parents, the third thing, the child is genetically, energetically unique. And so are the creations that we make in collaboration with others, as well as just ourselves over time, we become more complex and unique. But where these creations are being born out of is another area and the great expanse of sexual energy that I don't always feel like gets talked about. I feel like sexual energy often gets more in the edge of the masculine of what you're doing with it, of how to charge it, of how to hold it. But then there is that creative or that sexual energy or that sexual tension or sexual potential that is the abyss, that is the femininity, that is the not knowing, that is the uncreated and tapping into that space, that raw uncreated energy or the creatrix in itself, that womb of raw potential instead of raw power, it's raw potential. It has yet to be but it is like uh, it is fertile and it is a, available for something to be created within it. And that's sort of that space that we enter in when we meditate and where that Jing begins to begin to replenish again. It's when we access that abyss and we are able to be there for as long as possible. And then you'll notice, you know, if you have a lot of energy if you have a lot of life force when you're in that abyss you will notice things trying to create and the longer that you can hold out and the longer that you can replenish yourself instead of following through on that idea that first thing that manifests when you're meditating in that abyss allow it to absorb and then grow and build and become more complex and i believe that that is also a really helpful way to advance yourselves is playing with that space and playing with its potential to build and grow on itself, to improve on itself. I think it's definitely that state of abyss is our magnetic state is how we attract things to our energy. A lot of what sexual energy is too, is also our ability to attract what it is that matches us, what it is that's healthy for us. It's a huge part of it, especially the feminine. So if you've been feeling like you haven't been attracting what you want or what you think you've been manifesting with your electric creative energy, but it's not coming back to you, you need to engage and lo make love to your life and to yourself so you can access that abyss again to forget almost to become nothing. And then you'll notice when you come back to it or you become lucid again, that likely whatever it is you are manifesting had the opportunity to come closer to you, if not reach you in that moment where you are finally not 
expressing and pushing out and seeking, but you were holding, you were bathing. My favorite thing to do is take a bath and, or a shower and just totally forget about everything and just have my own conversation with myself. Again, access the abyss, breathe, baptize myself, completely submerge. And uh, it works really well in attracting. So yeah, I think that is our our lecture for today. I hope that while I was talking just now, you were able to write down again, anything that was coming up when we were doing the clearing, when we were reviewing in a way, your sexual energies, or at least your lower Dantian, when you were placing hands on yourself and when you're holding over your heart and holding over your lower belly, what is it that came up? Was there a memory? Was there a thought? Was there maybe an unhelpful phrase potentially? Maybe you touched your body and you said something unkind about yourself in that moment. I know it happens, especially because I asked you to touch your belly. A lot of people have a lot of shame. They don't even want to touch their own bellies. That is a major block that we're going to need to heal. That is an illness that we have to heal. That's a lack of love. That's a lack of sexual energy flow. You aren't feeling it. You aren't feeling it and you aren't feeling it. And we need you to be feeling it. We need you to be feeling every inch of your body and knowing that it is orgasmic, that every cell in your body is given love and support by you to be itself, to express itself and to rep replace itself with another beautiful and relevant, you know, cell, another beautiful and relevant orgasmic energy creation pocket, like making love to our own body's replenishment cycle with our sexual energies is also a great way for you using that energy and that intention is to place that those serpents and place all that charge in the areas of your body that need the extra love. I think we're going to have to continue talking about this topic a few other times this year for other guardian trainings on the 18th and the progressive months, because there's more, I think that's going to advance now from this class. I also want to recommend using rose quartz and rose essential oils. If you haven't been using that yet, sleeping with it, having with it, on you wearing it, especially if you're trying to attract love and someone to heal with uh, more often, someone who will protect your heart and can keep you in a way you can keep each other mutually safe and so on and help work, do body work and energy work on each other, help clear, help, help, sh you know, lift each other up, protect each other. We are going to heal our sexual energies and have our own sexual charge, responsible, mature, and fortified, and then continue to cooperate with beings and attract other people who are like that. So we may cooperate for the guardianship of our earth and provide creative solutions to a lot of what's going on and also continue to support and keep up with the inventive explosive energy of the children that we're all preparing and watching step into their role and their power. We're going to need vitality to keep up with them. And we're also going to continue to make sure that we protect their vitality and their Jing energy throughout their lives, which may be hard for us because we weren't able to do that. So keeping up with a very charged being, it is going to be hard. They're likely going to resonate out of our frequency if they're extremely healthy and you're, you're more depleted and, you know, those children are going to go off into the world and have to go do something without you because you just couldn't match their energy. And that's okay. That is normal. We do mature and we do lose energy over time, but I feel very strongly just to cultivate this now with these intentions for the guardians. Thank you so much for sharing also in the comments. If you want to write any of your comments down, you want to share, because if you, if you do share, and you do comment under my videos and these workshops and stuff, people who maybe were, you know, sometimes you have so many blockages, you can't even pull up anything. But when you see an example of somebody, it helps kind of break free that 
that density and that intensity. And again, if you're feeling like you have blockages, you need to physically shake your body. You need to physically shake and move that energy out of those spots. That's how animals release trauma. They shiver and they quiver. So if you feel like you have an extended amount of trauma, it's time to just have like a whole spaz attack on your bed or on your floor and just shake and shake and shake and shake and shake and shake and shake until you're exhausted and then take a break and do it again until you're exhausted and do it again the third time if you need to and just shake your body until you literally have released that tension. It's the only way for our nervous systems to release. A lot of people do it through dance, but sometimes it's not vicious or intense enough. You've seen a shaking animal and how they vibrate. You got to get to that level. You got to get back to that spot, vibrate it out and finally let it go. So that's another final bit of advice for today's call. I see here in the recording that we have, you were feeling some shame here in the live recording group here. Thank you for joining as well, I won't say your names, but thank you for joining and giving me some feedback while we're recording this for everybody. If the comment says, I felt shame in my stomach, but also felt the abyss of creation. I almost felt a type of purity within my energy. Excellent, which is what we're going for. You are pure. There is, there, it is a pure energy. It's a wonderful energy. I'm sorry that shame did come up, but like I was saying, that was something that was expected almost to kind of shake free. We don't even notice some, sometimes where or how much shame we're holding, even if it's just from cultural or interpersonal, like I said, your social circles, how you were raised. Some people feel shameful over the craziest things. You know, there's distortions on the logic of even what you're shameful about. So we're going to, thank you for bringing that up. And I just wanted to toss that in there and let that go, let that go. Let that go, not forget it, because then you'll forget the lesson you learned. You don't want to forget anything, but you need to retain the lesson and the knowledge to avoid that situation again. So you can get the juice, the true gold and the nectar out of those experiences and not only do it better in your future, but code that into your DNA, code it in your DNA. So your children will be born and will be less likely to get tricked or duped by that situation <laughs> if you have healthy children <laughs> and if you're healthy about it. Uh, another comment coming in about the shaking just for the final part of the recording that you were shaking before because you were doing some physical activity and you're feeling nice and smooth now. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And these buildups of energy, if you're having trouble and you realize you're really building up, a lot of people even will go out of their way to use when they have a buildup of this sexual energy, they will use it with sexual. I would say they would express it in potentially toxic or healthy sexual ways, but there's other ways to build up and use this energy. And that is sort of that Kundalini and that tantric sort of knowledge. So go into that, research that more. There's plenty of other teachers who have way more of the vocab and the techniques. I have got books. I could still read. I could learn so much more and bring even more to the table about this next year. If we just repeated all of the themes on a monthly basis next January, maybe we'll do this theme again and I'll have way more even to build upon this and continue the maintenance. So I'm glad that we took it easy today in a way we want to take it easy on our sexual energy. It is a delicate, raw energy that is so, so innocent in a way. It's truly what it is that's keeping us all alive. What it is that kept us alive as a child that want, made us want to grow into an adult and made us want to even pass on our, our knowledge to other children and create stuff and make a better world. It's that energy, that purity within us. And it's been tried to be shown and viewed as something not good or nasty or shameful. But obviously now we know that it's because if we had our sexual energy sorted out and confirmed and supported, it's a great, great threat to the agendas at hand that are trying to manipulate people's raw creative energy into creating scenarios and timelines for our collective that are slow, that are draining, that are 
I would say not our best option and probably not something that you or me would ever choose. So we have to gain that back, fortify, and then we're going to begin reprogramming the collective consciousness with our amplitude built up again. That's the goal. That was the goal of this video. Again, keep warming your hands, pushing that energy into your body, holding those crystals, doing cardiovascular activity. If you're having really low energies, if you're not having that spark, again, you have to start doing activities. You need to be able to go outside in nature and let nature talk to you and let that randomness of creation and let the abyss populate something new for you to have an experience, to have an a, almost a, an orgasmic moment of realization or inspiration or curiosity. Nature in a way is making love to us all the time and from that abyss or that like rawness of creation too. So engage with the lovemaking that is in our environment already and love with yourself so much, replenish yourself so much, care for yourself so much, learn what your hobbies are, learn what your desires are, learn who you were before all of the pre-programming, who you wanted to be, who is your most confident, sweet, precious self. That person's not gone anywhere. And there's a reason that person was the way they were in that size. So let's, let's find that person. Let's fortify that person and give them the the support with their sexual energy and their creative energy to be and go and do that thing. And then share it with their next generations and share it with all of us and help us evolve. Wonderful call today. Again, I am truly grateful to do this work. Guardian training has been a wonderful way to meet on a monthly basis to go over these themed upgrades, to connect with my audience and to grow and heal myself in, and others in an efficient way that worked for me. So really fun today. Excellent job, everybody. I felt your energy with me and I send my love and energy to you and on your path. And as you fortify your strength and your superpowers and activate your DNA, I got some wonderful dreams last night about our DNA activating more very soon, potentially just today in specific, but there was an upgrade I was shown so just, again, that is that state of magnetic absorption in a way. If you want to be able to go and get a bath after this, I'm going to do that. Epsom salts be in absorption and also allowing that your cells to then begin to shed and release the toxins and get rid of no longer what no longer serves. <laughs> like wonderful, uh, wonderful being with you guys. And, um, yeah, I'm wishing you all the best on this next month. I will see you in February on the 18th. The theme hasn't come out to me yet. So just keep, stay tuned to my Instagram and my Patreon. Obviously, thank you for signing up for my Patreon so you can get these invites. Thank you for signing up for my YouTube and my Instagram, those notifications. Also, I'm getting uh, way more on Twitter now lately, Facebook always, but that's more my personal life and my peers that I mutually know and work with in this realm. And then all the other social medias is more about the outreach, about meeting new people. And then eventually, hopefully you can become, I hope my Facebook friend, because I'll have physically met you, trust you, want to work with you further, engage you. So these are also examples of the boundaries that I have as working online is I have these sort of gates towards my person and who I am. It wasn't always like that as I've been growing and sorting that out, but having these gateways and these certain levels of, I want to say intimacy with your own body can be really artfully done, can be really fun. And you can know that what your boundaries and what your rules are for each social media and what er we each area of, of engagement and enjoy your rules. Enjoy knowing that when someone broke your rule, that is your opportunity to you know, be the police of your energy to put out those boundaries, delete that person, block that person to access to you again. You know, they don't need it. There's billions of other people on the world. They can bounce off of you and go in some other direction. And it, the less amount of time and energy you spend thinking about things that drained you or you didn't like, the quicker you can free yourself from the density of that situation. You can hand it off to God, creator spirit being like, 
Ooh, swerve that situation. Here you go. Hand that off to God. And if it keeps getting handed to you, and then you'll know like, okay, maybe this is for me, but otherwise hand it off, hand it off. You don't need to take care of it. A lot of us try to take in too much. That's what bogs us down. We feel shameful. We feel responsible for all the stuff that we attract. It's like, no, half of it just needs to bounce off you and go somewhere else completely. It's almost like a part of our ability is also to be bouncy and reflect off of us stuff to where it's supposed to go. (laughs) Wonderful container, guys. Wonderful time. My lovely friends, I love you guys so much. Thank you for supporting me as I grow Ascension Diaries and grow my own modalities of healing and support to the community. It means a lot. And uh, I'll be seeing you all very soon, hopefully in February on the 18th, at least for one of these calls again. And in the meantime, everywhere else on social media, unless you're naughty, and then I've already gotten rid of you due to boundaries. So if you have the need to say something or be naughty in my direction, do it now so I can properly uh, bounce you out. Okay. (laughs) Otherwise, all the wonderful love I receive. Thank you. And may it continue to overflow out of my cup and replenish all the other, the creators and beings that I'm helping to advance and move into their creative endeavors faster than I could based off of that built up momentum. So more efficiency, more goodies. Thank you all. I love you. I'll see you around. (laughs) Bye guys.